is one club more important than another club? Is the god that your club worships the same god that members of another club worship? Perhaps God doesn't exist at all. Perhaps God is a way to give validity to a bunch of lost souls who wish to belong to something. Do we have to belong to a club? We were a small family living on the outskirts of a township outside Lahore and uh, next to a Muslim village. And suddenly communities which had been friendly and lived together for decades and centuries were at each other's throats. And my, I remember my mother coming to me in the evening with two swords in her hand and said, you sleep with these under your pillow. And your younger sister who was about five at that time will sleep on the next bed, and if you're attacked by the Muslims, you kill as many as you can. And uh, if you find you're being overpowered, kill your sister and then kill yourself. What is God, guys? What is God? Yes. God is a very wonderful, he's amazing, wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is wonderful. He has given us many things. He has created the atmosphere, nature, trees, mountains, water, and air. Teachers, our parents. We, the human beings, are the most loveliest creature of God in the world. God is everywhere. Everyone is given by God. Everyone is from God. I see God in myself. God is in our heart. And I feel God in my heart. He is almighty. He is present everywhere. But he mostly present in the heart of human beings. But when we disobey him, he give us punishment. I am a Christian. Uh, my religion is uh, Muslim. I am a Hindu. Every religion has many names of God. In Hindu, we can say Ganesh. And in Muslims, the Prophet of Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, and in Christian, Jesus Christ. But I think that God is only one. But God is only one. I think God is one. God is one. And we can say in different names. That is the duty of we, the grown-ups, to teach the students the meaning of the Lord. Almighty. God has not created religions. I am a Muslim and I am a Hindu. He has created humans. I believe that there is one God and I also believe that there is only one God. Trust God, do the good things, help others, love your neighbor and these are the things through which we can approach God. I don't think it's easy to define God. Let it be according to the individual what, what he thinks of God or what he doesn't think about God. It's quite surprising. Every religion professes love for humanity. But why do religions fight? Yet is not able to tolerate somebody else practicing a different type of religion. For somebody who's deeply religious, basically, is very difficult to explain. But the fact is that religions do fight. There have been wars over religions. People have killed each other. But what if you ask them, why did you fight? I don't think they'll be able to answer that question. I am burning inside when I'm seeing all these fights. It's only ego. My God, the name I attribute to God is the only name. He's only Allah. He's only Krishna. He's only Christ. He's only this, he's only that. I mean, no. Nobody can know. It is just like a drop saying, well, I know the ocean. Ocean can see the drop, but drop cannot be at the ocean. So, if God really does exist, 
how come he allows so much suffering in the world? <laughs> she's feeling as if she's got a fever. She's shaking. She feels very cold. We've arranged for the stretcher to come and pick her up because I don't think she can walk. So we're going to take her on the stretcher over to the doctors. And then if she needs to be admitted, we're going to admit her to Maheshwari Hospital. Why do you spend your life going around disease-ridden tents? Because there's so much suffering that isn't being addressed and people aren't taken care of that I try to take care of the people who are suffering where there isn't any other option for them. When I was very young, I grew up Catholic, and I think the influence of the nuns and charity and good qualities were emphasized. I think what I've seen is that no matter what religion you are, there are many God-conscious people, and I feel that God is the same to everyone. It's just the leaders who seem to lose sight of the true God consciousness through gaining power that they are maybe lost. Or maybe lost. There is some greater power above us. This thought makes a man humble, saves him from the ego, the pitfalls of life. The greatest enemy of the man is the ego. The greatest enemy of the man is the ego. The greatest enemy of the man. This is, uh, she, is like, she is like a god. I feel that people are being taken advantage of by the power intoxicated leaders sometimes, especially when the people are so wonderful and so devout, so dedicated, so God conscious, trying to do what's best, trying to do what's right. So wonderful, so devout, so God conscious. The leaders of religion could empower people to do so much good in the world, even if they would just tell them to each do one kind act to another person each day. If we all helped each other, the world be, would be a different place. So many experiences have happened, and I've been having anxiety attacks about what I'm doing, about what I'm trying to say with this film. Mr. Gill, who gave us so much, decided to interview me. If I point that monkey out to you, who is jumping up, and those monkeys, which that man is trying to scare away. And I say, that is God. Mm -hmm. Will you recognize it? No. You've been asking a question. What is that question? What is God? How do you expect that question to help you? I am fed up personally of religions battling each other mm -hmm. and saying their God is greater than another God. Uh, Mr. Gill also brought up the fact that I might upset a lot of people making this film because people are very sensitive. And I'm getting in their face with the camera and going, what is God? Does he really exist? Does God exist?